Hi again, welcome to uh, an update on the Section 30 order edition of IndyCar from this morning. Um, it is today, I've got to get the days right, <laughs> it is of course the 26th of August today. Now, I was talking briefly this morning uh, on an early edition of the show uh, about the so-called Section 30 order and what it means and what it doesn't mean. One of the things I think that occurred to me after that show is that the Section 30 order as it stands, because it is a piece of, um, it's an instrument if you like, it's a method for both governments to get together and to change the amount of devolution or the powers of the Scottish Parliament or to reduce the powers of the British Parliament. But whatever it is, it doesn't actually need to be done before a referendum because if you think about this logically, if you have a referendum which the Scottish Government is going to legislate for anyway, then within the competence of the Scottish Parliament it can hold what used to be known as uh, an informative or an informational uh, referendum which allows uh, an advisory referendum if you like uh, a vote which uh, shows the government of the day the strength of feeling in the people so in other words it's an opportunity for people uh, to express themselves democratically and what they want their future to be now it doesn't uh, having a referendum doesn't mean that anybody has to pay any attention to it. However, having said that, it means that if, let's say for example, if 4.2 million of us who were on the electoral register last time we voted on independence, including European nationals who are living and working here as Scottish citizens, and also 17 and 18 year olds who are old enough to vote now with, within the Scottish framework uh, for a referendum, then if you include all of those people, and the vote comes back as a fairly substantial uh, vote in favour of independence, let's say it was over 60% or 65 something like that, then that's a very clear majority. And it would be extremely difficult for any government, either Scottish, English, Welsh or anybody else, or European for that matter, to say that the Scottish people have not spoken loudly and said democratically what they want to have happen in Scotland or to Scotland. So at that point, there's no reason why you can't then look for a Section 30 order because at that point you are about to change the um, constitutional future of the entire country. You're about to um, get all 100% of your uh, powers back. And the only way to do that is with the Section 30 order, which the British government would then have to agree to because let's say that there is this successful yes vote and it's quite a resounding success, over 60%, just for talking's sake, which is not unlikely, incidentally, given the current polling. But let's say it was 65, just for uh, illustration purposes. It would be impossible for the European Union to then say that Scotland did not express its democratic will to become an independent nation state. And the European Union would be <coughs> quite legitimately ready and able to recognise the new state straight away because as soon as Scotland has voted um, to end its 300 year old treaty with England and replace it with something better, the European Union would be able to recognise Scotland as a country and that would put gigantic pressure on what remains of the British government uh, to also recognise reality. And the reality is that Scotland has said it doesn't want to be part of the United Kingdom, which has left Europe. It doesn't want to be part of the UK, which only has a trade agreement with America. Uh, and once that democratic process is finished, there is no democratic country in the world which would gainsay it, which would say against it and say that it wasn't fair. I think um, the British government has had plenty of time to think about a Section 30 order. They have had lots of time to realise that Scots have already voted 62% against their Brexit plans and they're going ahead anyway. And if you can't trust the British government on a gigantic issue like leaving the largest trading bloc on the world, then Scotland might as well be independent because we are not being uh, given any credence at all. We're, our wishes are not being respected by our government in any way. End of treaty, in my opinion. So therefore, if we have our, our advisory referendum, which is perfectly legal, it will be uh, legitimate, it will be legislated for in our Parliament lawfully in Scotland, it will be conducted to the highest and most meticulous standards of uh, transparency and fairness, 
but without, interestingly, without having to resort to the British uh, Electoral Commission, who definitely manipulated that referendum the last time. But having made it transparently obvious how fair it is and how well counted it is and how it's beyond any reproach, it's impossible then for the UK government to say that it was not a legitimate vote. And therefore the Section 30 order becomes the method by which the negotiations start because the negotiations have to start with something and it might as well be a retrospective Section 30 order as anything else. Other than that, uh, the Section 30 order could just be torn up and thrown in the bin and negotiations started between Scotland and England with teams of negotiators. I mean, it doesn't actually matter. But the Section 30 order doesn't have to come before the referendum. It can come after it. And that is something which nobody, as far as I know, has yet <coughs> actually said out loud. So I'm saying it out loud today, that looking at the legalities of this and what's required in law across the UK for the Section 30 order, which is an agreement between governments to act together to expand or reduce the powers of parliaments, there is no reason why that has to happen before the referendum. It can happen afterwards, and in fact, it probably should happen afterwards, because by that time, that's when you need the Section 30 order to completely redraw the power lines between Westminster and Holyrood. Holyrood getting 100% of its powers and 100% of its resources back, getting rid of Trident, having them agreed to be gone within a certain time frame, which will be reasonable. All of these things fall under the Section 30 remit, which is the enabling uh, discussions which set out exactly what the new constitutional setup is. And that constitutional setup would be Scotland returns to its original state as being an independent nation with its own government, with its own finances, with its own taxation system and everything else has now gone. The, the British Parliament would lose all power over our resources and all power over everything in Scotland. And anything that happens inside Scotland would then be our responsibility. So that's my feelings on it. I think the Section 30 order, although it's been asked for and turned down, does not preclude us from having a referendum. We have the referendum and then we ask them for the Section 30 order after we've won it, because by then there will be no way that they cannot give a Section 30 order, because they're going to look really stupid when Scotland is staying in the European Union and we, they recognise us as a sovereign state, uh, and Great Britain is sitting there like a pudding, refusing to let go like a big baby. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a situation which is hard to imagine at the moment, but it looks like that's the way it's going to go. And anyway, I just thought I'd say this. Um, an afterthought, if you like, after thinking through the legalities of what I've read on these rules and regulations, the Section 30 order should be applied retrospectively after we have proved that we uh, are in majority for independence. And the proof of that just comes from a lawful Scottish referendum which is legislated for at Holyrood. End of story. That's it. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.